This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. After Governor Mills announced Sears Island as the selected location for an offshore wind power port, protesters took to Belfast in opposition of that project. Our Doug Banks was in Belfast earlier today to hear why they are taking action. Along the windy bridge that crosses Belfast Bay, protesters from separate groups, organizations and coalitions have gathered in protest of Governor Mills' decision on Tuesday to go ahead with the wind turbine project on Sears Island. Protesters that I've spoken to say that they'd rather have this project on Max Point directly next to Sears Island. One protester that I spoke to said that they're not against renewable energy and those kind of projects, but they don't want it to affect the wildlife habitat and marine life on Sears Island and the fishing there that happens as well. One protester that I spoke to said that there's a black hole of information that surrounds this and they want a clear picture as to why Sears Island is the best choice and they haven't been getting those answers. Earlier today, I spoke with Searsport's town manager and later tonight you'll be hearing more from his perspective who's for the project on Sears Island and what he says this will bring to not only Searsport in the region in Midcoast, Maine, but the plans moving forward in this big first step into renewable energy in Maine. In Belfast, I'm Doug Banks for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A lawsuit filed Tuesday against the Bangor YMCA in connection with an abusive coach back in 1979 is shining a light on the pervasive problem of childhood sexual abuse and how best to protect children. We spoke with the attorney for the abuse survivor who brought the lawsuit. That attorney says his client was sexually abused by a basketball coach working for the Bangor YMCA in 1979. Wayne Quimby was 13 years old at the time of the abuse, which occurred at the coach's home, and he did come forward at, at the time. His abuser was prosecuted and convicted. The lawsuit alleges that the Bangor YMCA was negligent in hiring that coach in the first place due to a prior criminal conviction, and that a simple background check at the time would have prompted them to ask questions and perhaps not hire the coach at all. Holding the abusers accountable is important, but also holding their enablers accountable. It's an important part of the healing process for survivors of childhood sex abuse. And it also shines a light on an organization and what it failed to do uh, that we hope will be a, a signal for other organizations to look at their policies and procedures and implement you know, what the best practices are. An attorney representing the Bangor YMCA says the Y takes any allegations of sexual misconduct extremely seriously, especially considering the number of children under their care and supervision, and they're just starting to dig into the circumstances surrounding the abuse. They also say where the incident occurred is central to this case. If the incident took place at the YMCA, where the YMCA had um, supervisory responsibility, oversight responsibility, um, I think that would be one thing. Um, the fact that the complaint alleges that um, the incident did not occur on YMCA premises um, is very relevant. Now, it's important to note that the Maine Supreme Judicial Court is currently considering a case that challenges the constitutionality of the law that lifted the statute of limitations on bringing these types of cases. That outcome could affect this lawsuit. Authorities made what they described as dangerous drug arrests after a police pursuit this morning. Penobscot County Sheriff Troy Morton says deputies attempted to stop a vehicle on Littlefield Avenue in Herman around 1042 this morning. He says the vehicle failed to stop and led police on a chase along I-95 North before pulling over near the Broadway exit in Bangor. Police seized 142 grams of crack cocaine and 11 grams of fentanyl during the incident. The driver, 27-year-old Jacob Hawks, was arrested and charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs, violation of conditions of release, operating after revocation, eluding an officer, and driving to endanger. 58-year-old Clinton Taylor of Bangor, a person in the vehicle, was arrested and charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs as well. Sheriff Morton says another passenger, 26-year-old Kayla McCarthy, of Lee was taken to the hospital as a precaution because she allegedly had dangerous drugs inside her body. Once cleared, she was charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs in violation of conditional release. 
The Somerset County Grand Jury has indicted two people accused of robbing a bank and a convenience store. Waterville police say a local Bangor Savings Bank was robbed on October 31st and a Circle K in Fairfield was robbed the next day. 24-year-old Isaac Sterling of Bangor and 25-year-old Trevor Miller were, bo were both indicted on two counts of robbery and two counts of theft by unauthorized taking. A Bingham man with a long history of sex crimes was also indicted. 48-year-old Christopher Cates was arrested in September for crimes involving a child. He's accused of sex crimes involving another child in the town of Moscow earlier this year. The grand jury indicted him on 10 counts of including unlawful sexual contact, indecent conduct, conduct and tampering with a victim. And a Skowhegan man who allegedly ran over a pedestrian in Skowhegan in November was also indicted. 43-year-old Ryan Mann turned himself in following a phone conversation with a deputy. Police had been looking for him since a woman was struck and seriously injured. He was indicted on several counts, including aggravated assault, reckless conduct with a dangerous weapon, and leaving the scene of an accident. Well, Governor Janet Mills unveiled legislation today that she says will strengthen public safety and the mental health system in the wake of the Lewiston mass shooting. The legislation would establish a violence prevention program at the Maine Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. She says it strengthens Maine's mental health system by expanding crisis receiving centers and improves Maine's extreme risk protection order law. The legislation expands checks against the National Instant Crime Background System for advertised private sales and incentivizes checks for unadvertised private sales. The governor says the legislation addresses concerns about gun violence while respecting the right to safe and legal gun ownership. A looming backlog of cases left over from the pandemic, an ongoing attorney shortage, and the need for technology infrastructure are some of the topics lawmakers heard about during the State of Judiciary Address. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has more about the recommendations and call to action for lawmakers. A constitutional crisis. That's how the Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Judicial Court describes the State of Judiciary in Maine. We are in a constitutional crisis, folks. The state is obligated to provide an attorney in most criminal cases. We have people sitting in jail every day. Frequently, there's a dozen or more in Arista County alone on any given day without counsel. Last year, lawmakers raised the hourly wage to $150 an hour for attorneys who contract cases through the Maine Commission on Indigent Legal Services. According to Chief Justice Stanfill, that hasn't solved the problem of attracting attorneys to cases. For a variety of reasons, I'm not sure I understand them all, um, the numbers of attorneys willing to take these cases keeps falling. Chief Justice Stanfill adds that aging infrastructure, both physical and technological, will require millions of dollars in investments to upgrade and maintain. Another problem facing the judiciary is the backlog of court cases filed during the pandemic when court operations were restricted. We did our best, but people were distressed and the backlogs kept getting bigger and our workforce was trying to solve them and they couldn't. While they have made a dent in the backlog, Chief Justice Stanfill says they aren't anywhere close to completing and some cases may still be years away from being heard. We have a data person who ran a, a model and I think he came up with something like 2028 um, possibly or something like that but that's also assuming we're fully staffed and uh, you know that's always a challenge as well. The Chief Justice adds in order to solve these issues, it'll take the work of all three branches of state government. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. We, we enjoyed another pretty calm and uh, temperate day out there today. I was just going to say, I mean, today was an absolute gift. It yeah. was beautiful. The temperature was mild, minimal wind. Really, uh, actually a great day to be outside. I just sort of sat in the park with my dog for a little while. Yeah. And it really was just very, very mild. So definitely a nice relief and a great day to take advantage of the sunshine. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, let's go ahead, get a first check of our forecast and see what else is heading our way.
Thank you so much, Beth and Peter, and hope you were nice and toasty inside today because that was not the case outside as temperatures were a little bit chilly once again. Our average is around 33 degrees, but take a look at these lows we had earlier this morning. Single digits, even below zero in some spots, especially up north. Check out Clayton Lake all the way up north, 14 below zero. So it was frigid outside all over the state earlier this morning, but we did rebound nicely. Temperatures were near average for this time of year. Uh, low to mid 30s all over the area of the coast. Same story. We got Rockland, Bar Harbor, and then down into Machias. Temperatures were in those low to mid 30s. And then, of course, up north, that's where we have a thicker snowpack. Temperatures were a little bit cooler than that. Overall, though, not too bad. Just a mixture of some clouds out there. But get ready. A little bit more rain and snow will be back in the forecast very, very soon in just 48 hours. Overnight tonight, though, we're going to stay mainly clear. A few passing clouds here and there. Temperatures, though, will continue to cool off. We're going to be hovering in those mid-20s. Beth and Peter? Nice right. clear overnight. That looks, I mean, mild. Yeah, pretty yeah. mild, especially compared to what uh, Clayton Lake was experiencing well, last Presque night. Well, Presque Isle was, neg <laughs> yeah. was, was 16 below. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Hope you all have your warm socks there. Oh, my goodness. Well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, the owner of the Bucksport Landfill getting more time to decide on the future of that landfill. Our Matthew Jaroncic will explain. And our Grace Blanchard will give us a local look at Black History Month. We'll have those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. It's so important to me to work at a place that I believe in. I love having that one-on-one -on -one with our members. Do you come to a credit union to work because you actually feel like helping people? You get to be a part of really life-changing yeah, awesome. moments. We get to guide them through the process of having their dream come true. It's work that I can really believe in. It builds a really rewarding professional career. You can honestly make a difference in people's lives. And that's why I like credit unions. It's just a wonderful place to work. Good luck to all the area basketball teams in the tournament from Color Concepts, 840 Hammond Street, Bangor. Congratulations to the Hamden boys and girls basketball teams on a fantastic season from RNK Variety. Hamlin's Marine wants to wish the best of luck to all the teams that work so hard to make it to the tournament this year. Whether you can pinpoint the problem or can't quite put your finger on it, the friendly professionals from Coastal Auto Parts can help point you in the right direction with Maine's largest network of parts. You can trust your vehicle will have what it needs to get you to the moments that matter most because Napa knows the keys to a winning team. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts helps keep our communities running. Team up together with the fuel that keeps us firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. The Furniture Gallery's President's Day celebration is on. Your choice of three colors, this Ashley recliner, just $2.99. Host dinners in style with a new five-piece dining set, only $3.99. Get comfortable with a new sofa starting at $4.49. Or upgrade to a spacious sofa chaise for just $5.99. All full-price Ashley bedroom furniture, still 10% off. And save up to 70% off clearance items. Hurry in while it lasts and save big. Shop local, save money at the Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Windham. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Members of the Bucksport community are voicing upset after learning the owner of a land of a town landfill is being given more time to figure out that landfill's future. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. You asked, we did due diligence, and, and our information says that there is no future. Bucksport Town Manager Susan Lazard expressed disappointment after learning the Maine Department of Environmental Protection is giving Bucksport LLC extra time to consider its options. Supervisors had had a meeting of some kind with Bucksport Mill LLC and had determined that they could have some more time to look at what their options were. That generator-owned facility is not in any way, shape, or form set up to be, or has the capacity to be, any kind of a solid waste landfill. AIM currently owns the mill. The DEP sent AIM a letter last year saying they must submit a closure plan for the mill by January 1st, 2024, and outline a complete closure plan by 2026. 
Lazar said she found out after calling to check on the status on the closure plan. The mill continues to sit dormant after shutting down in 2020. Lissard isn't the only one who's not happy about this. Residents we spoke to say they're very upset that Bucksport LLC is getting this extra time. It's very concerning. We thought we had had it. They had, the DEP had done its job, but it no longer has. It is pretty clearly already um, having a detrimental effect on the environment. Despite the extra time, Lazard says she's committed to keeping the mill closed. The town will actively oppose any attempt to reopen that facility for any purpose. There's a town council meeting Thursday for the public to comment on this matter. In Bucksport, Matthew Jaronsic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Since 1970, America has recognized February as Black History Month. Our Grace Blanchard spoke with a local create collector of black history to dive into the diverse past here in the Bangor area. There's over 100 years of black presence in the Bangor area. What started as a mission to learn more about his past led one Mainer down a deep dive of black history in Maine. The logging industry. That's when you started seeing the largest presence of blacks moving into the area. Local David Payne says his family has resided in Orrington for decades. After the passing of his grandfather in the 1990s, he has spent the last few decades discovering not only his history, but black history in the Bangor area. There's a greater presence of other ethnicities, of course, in the, in the state, but um, they're definitely an interwoven fabric in the community and um, have been accepted. And However, in the 1920s, the area was certainly not immune to racial prejudice. Um, the KKK was here. As a matter of fact, the largest headquarters for the KKK in New England was based in Brewer. Although he says his family views him as a historian, he considers himself a collector of history and has helped connect the dots for himself and others in the community to their ties to black history. If I don't put names on the photos I have, if I don't document what's been told to me, what I've learned is great, but it becomes lost if I don't do something to preserve it. He hopes this Black History Month to see more young people immersing themselves into their own past to see how history is often weaved together. I hope the younger generation would ask questions and talk to the older generation. The biggest, the biggest way we lose history is by not asking. In Orrington, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And there's still much more to come on ABC 7 News at 6. Including the latest from the NPA basketball tournament. Stay with us. Your financial goals may appear to be all about savings and investing. But in reality, it's about much more. Your life, your family, and your legacy. Plan your future with Warren Financial. People ask me all the time, does Lowry & Associates really get all of those clients, all of those big settlements? Yes, we do. And you know what else is true? I really am standing on top of this big truck. Harris Lumber is locally owned and has been serving the Penquist region for more than 50 years. See them for all your projects, big or small. Customer service is their number one priority. And with a full line of lumber and hardware items, they can also deliver to your job site. Harris Lumber, Milo. Welcome to the Orno Arcade, your local affordable destination. We want to provide you with the best experience we can without costing a small fortune. Our ever popular nine hole black light mini golf course is a huge attraction. Plus we have the best arcade video games to choose from, including both modern and retro games. We have weeknight specials consisting of We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orno Arcade. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. Your financial goals may appear to be all about savings and investing, but in reality, it's about much more. Your life, your family, and your legacy. Plan your future with Warren Financial. Tonight's sports is brought to you by the KG. Stop in for hunting and fishing supplies, apparel, and homemade food.
Welcome in to Fast Break Tournament Edition, brought to you by Dorsey Furniture and Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. It is still Tourney 2024. I'm still Tyler Cruz. We have a busy day Wednesday here. Mid-Tourney week, semis kicking off. Before we get too deep into it, let's send it down to Ryan Sudal, who is live at the Augusta Civic Center. Ryan? Hey, Tyler, thank you so much. Yes, I am here at the Augusta Civic Center for the A North semifinal games across the girls and the boys. The first two games, the girls' games wrapping up. First one, 2 p.m. tip-off was the two-seed Hamden Academy against the three-seed Coney. A 17-6 fourth quarter for Coney, handing them the win off Abby Morrill's 15-point performance as well. They will face the number one seed Lawrence Bulldogs after they defeated the Four seed Camden Hill, 60 to 45 off Lily Gray's 20 points. And just tipping off in about 40 minutes right here will be the first of two boys semifinals. First off will be the two seed Mount Blue against the three seed Mesolonsky. That should be a fun one, as should the nightcap at 8.30 between Hamden Academy, the top seed, and the five seed Camden Hills. Should be fantastic action. We'll have highlights for you tonight on Fast Break and Fast Break, Ex Fast Break Extended on ABC7 and Fox 22. For now, back to you, Tyler. All right, thanks, Ryan. Let's catch up with our action from up in Bangor. A couple of classics to kick off today's section session at the Cross Center. Let's get right to it. All right, it is the MDI Trojans, the 10 seed, trying to keep the run alive. Old Town looking to get over the hump and into the finals. We're going to pick this up in the second half. MDI's Cal Hodgden goes up for the shot, but Emmett Beiter says, don't play with me, sends it back to the stance. Here come the Trojans again now. Spencer Lorendo finds Jay Haney, gets inside and gets it to go. So we were tied heading into the fourth, but the Coyotes would put their foot down. Steel hair, it gets sent all the way down to Grayson Tebow, who scores with ease. 14-0 run for Old Town to start the fourth. They win 49-42. All right, time for the rematch we've all been waiting for. Regional finals opponents the past two years now meeting in the semis. End of the first half is where we pick it off. Orno with it. Pierce Walston to Mason Kenny. He shoots this one from Orno and gets it to go at the horn. What a shot. What a celebration, too. Second half, Eagles trying to fight back. Joe James Chin to Chance Mercier. His step back three is good, but the Riots would stay in control. Bergen Soderberg, he is going to drain a three here from the wing. And Orno is on to their third straight regional finals. They win 53-38. All right, to the girls' B semis now. MDI and Old Town going at it. Rematch of their earlier game. This one just as good, too. We're going to skip right to the final 30 seconds. MDI's Molly Gray gets inside the lane, gets this to go with the left for two. Trojans lead 35-34 after tying it at the free throw line. Michaela Emerson has it. Going for the win. Yes, she gets it to go. The left-handed lay-in off the glass connects with less than two seconds left. Old Town heads back to the regional finals. They win 37-35. All right, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll have those full highlights plus reaction later. Here's Conrad Sapinski with your full five-day forecast. And thank you so much. Our main weather is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio in Penobscot Plaza in Bangor, providing custom ink by licensed artists for over 20 years. And take a look at this map. Not much going on all over the United States besides the western states, just west of Denver. That's why we're looking at a little bit of rain showers going on right from north of uh, Seattle, Portland, right down into California. We have some rain moving in. Los Angeles has seen, they're pretty much at number four for the wettest February on record and it does look like they're probably going to hit number two, maybe even number one with just rounds and rounds of storms moving into those western states. So very wet so far in the western states pretty much since beginning of this year. Here in our state and not much going on. We're kind of hanging out, right? Just a few passing clouds here and there. Temperatures near average, so not as cold as what we saw yesterday. This morning though, it was definitely cold. Some spots well below zero. In general, though, we are not going to be in the clear for long. We're going to get another low pressure system moving in. That's going to be moving in closer to Thursday night into Friday morning. This time, we're going to start out with a little bit of snow all over the state. And then as warmer air gets pushed up from the coast, of course, it gets pushed into our area. Those warmer temperatures will transition most of that snow into a rain and snow mix. So 
We'll keep an eye on things, but it does look like rain and snow here in town. Same story right by the coast, and then mainly snow just north of Dover Foxcroft, and that will be the case into the day on Friday. Now, future snowfall still a couple of days away. This is what we're thinking. Right by the coast, very minimal snow accumulations mainly into those early morning hours on Friday. And then as uh, rain and snow starts to mix in, warmer temperatures, a lot, a lot of that snow will be melting away. But just north of Bangor, that's what we're looking at, snow accumulations, maybe one to four inches. So not a big system at all, but definitely something to keep an eye on by those early morning hours on Friday. Of course, we all have somewhere to go. Now, winds are a little bit on the breezy end. Take a look at this. Here in town, 12 miles, miles an hour, right by the coast, anywhere around five to 10 miles per hour. So not looking too bad with the winds for today. Wind gusts, of course, closer to 15 to 20 miles per hour. But wow, once again, we had some beach weather down south. If you're traveling to Texas, oh boy, look at this. Bring out the sunscreen near 90 in some spots. So very warm air got pushed all the way up north. Even the Midwest and upper Midwest saw some record-breaking warm temperatures the last couple of days. We're not going to get record-breaking heat, but our average around 33. We're going to be warm once again next couple of days. A little bit cooler Saturday and Sunday, and then right back up into the 40s by beginning of next week. Now, for tonight, though, we are looking at temperatures near 20, increasing clouds, a little bit of freezing sprinkles will be possible in town, mainly north of town, so please be careful out there. For tomorrow, though, we are looking at temperatures around 40 degrees, so a little bit warmer. Those freezing sprinkles will be melting away and some decreasing clouds. Our extended forecast outlook does show warmer temperatures the next couple of days, rain and snow on Friday, and then Monday. Much colder by Saturday. Beth and Peter. All right. All righty. We have more to come after the break. Stay with us. It's time to start planning that new home or garage you've been thinking about. Hammond Lumber Company is here to help, offering complete building packages with everything you need. With several options on their website and thousands of unique plans in their in house drawing catalog, Hammond will help you make your dreams a reality. Choose your materials from Hammond's extensive showroom displays, and Hammond will deliver your order from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Start planning your new home or garage at Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Hello, this is George Whelan with Down East Direct Cremation. Now, anytime, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year, from the comfort of your desktop or the convenience of your mobile device, you can summon transport and arrange a simple, affordable, respectful, down east direct cremation for your deceased loved one. Just by using the button exclusively at downeastdirectcremation.com. All you need is the location address of the person who has died, their vital statistics information, a valid credit card for payment, and that's it. No need to pick up the telephone. No need to answer a bunch of questions. No need to come into the store. And it's still just $9.75 complete. It's so easy, even I can do it. For more information, visit us at downeastdirectcremation.com or call us at 207-225-5332. Simple, affordable, respectful. The button. Only at downeastdirectcremation.com. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. And now to some captivating drone video out of China's Alti Prefecture. A wolf pack traveling through some deep mountain snow by creating an actual tunnel. Take a look. The footage was captured by a local herder and it shows that several strong-bodied wolves are of course leading the charge, followed by smaller juvenile wolves. The leader of the expedition through the three foot deep snow would pop out his head every few yards just to make sure that they're you know, heading in the right direction, assessing the situation, kind of like a periscope there. According to wildlife conservation officials, the Alti Mountains region has experienced frequent snowfall, posing difficulties for wild animals who forage in the wild. That is definitely hmm. very, very cool to see. Yeah, some incredible footage there. Alrighty, folks, that is going to do it for us. Take care and good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>